Welcome to the FT's 10th Annual Business of Luxury Conference in Mexico City. We are joined today by Stella McCartney, the founder and creative director of her own label. Stella, thank you for being here. Uh, one of the biggest trends in luxury recently is not actually skirts or a particular color, but the idea of values and the fact that it's important to imbue a brand with a sense of values that can then draw consumers in. That's a little ironic to me, given that I don't really think of values as a trendy thing. Why do you think that's happening, and is it real? I hope it's happening. I hope it's really happening. I think it's happening in a lot of other industries. I think purely because it just has to. You know, the consumer is demanding it, and they won't take anything less, really. I think um, the luxury industry is catching up um, after a little while. And I think there's a lot more to be done. Um, I think, you know, the sad thing about the fashion industry in particular is we, things come in and out of fashion, you know, it's, it's kind of what we're good at. One season fur is fashionable, the next season it isn't. And I think the reality is, is to be sustainable and responsible in business needs to be continuous. Mm -hmm. I mean, you actually started your company with this idea, you know, that you had to be responsible and honest and it was forward thinking. And people have sort of caught up to that. But I guess my question is how much of it is you know, deep sort of systemic change and how much of it is people realizing, hey, that really worked really well for some other people over there. Maybe yeah. we should, you know, talk about it too. You know, at the end of the day, it needs to come into every single thing that you do. If you're doing it for the right reasons and you really mean what you're saying in an honest way, the approach has to be from top to bottom and it has to be completely throughout the, the business. It's very hard to be perfect, so I, I don't ever claim to be perfect. But I'm certainly trying, and, and I think to improve your business on a daily, weekly, monthly, yearly basis is, is really all you can try to do. You know, I mean, we take it in from things as simple as a recycled lining in our handbags to using wind power in, in our headquarters or, or our stores. Or, you know, so there's just, it has to be throughout the business, and it, if you really mean it. I think that there can be moments that it's fashionable to work with a women's group in Kenya to make a handbag. And, you know, that's not bad either. You know, I, for me, if it's fashionable to, to be responsible, then that, that's, that can only be a good thing. But I think really, if you're looking at it and you're approaching it from a business point of view, you really do have to mean what you say and action what you say also. Right, because it can in fact be quite damaging, I think, if it is just a momentary trend. Because, you know, it's both damaging to the people you work with if you go into a community and then pull out. Yeah. You know, and it's very damaging for a brand's, I think, reputation. It's a long-term commitment. You know, we've, um, we've been working with, um, with sourcing sustainable and environmentally friendly wool in Patagonia, for instance, and it's been a, it's been a really long-term commitment for us. We're working with local communities and it's as much about having ethical treatment of the animals as much as putting back into the soil what has been, you know, raped out of it for many, many years in an industry that people don't even question, you know, in the fashion industry, they don't always question the sourcing of their materials. And it's, it's critical, it's key, because in farming, for instance, you know you have to put back and you have to put back into the soil in order to get a good crop the next season. And, you know, the fashion industry doesn't really approach it from that point of view and you know I grew up on a farm I you know I've always had that way of looking at life and and so I guess it's slightly more sort of in my in my blood if you like but you know there's definitely a new way to look at the fashion industry and luxury and, and I think it's for me it's the most modern approach possible and that's I mean looking at things from a company sort of going inward what about going outward how do you see consumers responding to this and has it changed you know, from 2001 when you started to today yeah you know I've sort of had a journey because I'm obviously a little odd in my industry and in that I don't use leather I don't use fur I don't use PVC and you know the leather industry has a massive impact on on the you know, on the world that we live in. You know, it really is there's over 50 million animals are killed a year, a billion cattle a year. You know, it's, it has a huge, huge impact on water consumption, on land consumption, on tanneries and chemicals. And, you know, it not only impacts the animals, it impacts the planet, and it impacts the people working with these, these chemicals. So, you know, I, I'm kind of an odd, I'm an odd creature, I guess. And, um, so I guess at the beginning I was probably pretty much made fun of. You would probably know that <laughs> better than me. 
But I think slowly, I guess, I've, I have a business, you know, I have a, a profitable, healthy business to show for the way in which I've approached it. And I think that's the only way really I can do what I do and hold my head high. Not only am I creating products that I think are more, you know, they have more of a responsible approach, but also I, I have a business to show for it. And I think that's really the way for me to encourage and inspire other people in the industry. But you know, for me, first and foremost, is design. I'm a fashion designer and I have to create desirable, luxurious, beautifully made products that women are gonna want, whether they're a little more sustainable than the other or not. You know, the, the main thing is they need to want them. Great, thank you very much. Thank you.